What up gamers, I'm Sir Mav and welcome to another Apex Legends video. This is one that I've definitely wanted to get out to the community for a while now, but of course, luck would have it that the loot RNG for Apex Legends was not on my side at all times. But given that legendary tier hop-ups are a rarity within the game, the Skull Piercer was definitely a hard one to find these last few days of testing. Come on Respawn, just give us all the attachments within the testing range, it'll make my life way easier, that's all I'm asking for. Anyway, in this video I will be covering the damage stats as well as the benefits or even cons to all the hop-up attachments within Apex Legends for Season 2. Now if you watched my previous video on the best weapons of Apex, you learned all the damage stats for each weapon in Season 2 and the perks of each weapon at their stock values. But if you didn't have a chance to catch that video though, you can either click the card above or find the link down in the description box below. Keep in mind that the previous video only covers the stock values of each weapon from their rate of fire, stock max size, and damage output. Today I'm going to cover the specific weapons within Apex that benefit from hop-up attachments such as Skull Piercer Rounds, Disruptor Rounds, the Turbocharger, and others that can boost the overall damage of each weapon they can attach to. So of those weapons that you can acquire a hop-up for, you can see here within the table on the screen. As you see, the main guns we'll be talking about today are the Havoc Rifle and Devotion LMG that you can attach the Turbocharger hop-up to, the Alternator and the RE45 with the new amazing Disruptor Rounds hop-up, the Prowler and the Havoc again with their Select Fire hop-up option, the Mozambique and the P2020 that can acquire the Hammer Point Rounds, and last we have the Wingman and the Longbow DMR with their Skull Piercer Rounds attachment. Now I'm sure the majority of you understand what each of these hop-ups do for these guns. But I'm here to provide you with more of an understanding on how these hop-ups will benefit you and your team to win more rounds of Apex and come out as champions. Now one thing I didn't include in the last video was TTK of each weapon, or time to kill, which in shooters like this gives you an understanding of how long it will take you to down an enemy. Depending of course on whether or not that enemy is a Pathfinder, Bloodhound, or a Hulky Caustic. Thanks to the new Season 2 update, legends like Caustic now have a fortified profile that allows them to take 15% less damage, but slim profile legends like Pathfinder will now take 5% more damage. So of course TTK values with max armor will defer depending on the profile of each legend, but it's decimal points between the three. But what you will notice at the table at the end of this video is that if you don't have a magazine for certain weapons, it could mean life or death as when you have to reload, you reduce your chances of survival against your opponent. This is also depending of course on their skill level and the weapon they're personally firing at you as well. In any case, this info will help you to better understand your decisions on which gun to pick up while in the ring. So first let's start off with the Havoc and Devotion that both can acquire the Turbocharger hop-up. Now what the Turbocharger does for these two guns is either directly diminish or reduce the spin-up times for each of these guns. The Havoc, as you probably know, has a half second delay before it fires off the first bullet. Same goes for the Devotion LMG which takes a while to wind up to its full rate of fire. So the Turbocharger hop-up is definitely something you'll want to find for either of these guns as it will directly impact the rate of fire of each weapon, thus improving your overall damage output. The Havoc, at stock, has a rate of fire of 565 rounds per minute, which is not horrible as this still allows you to take down an enemy with full purple armor in about 0.7 to 0.9 seconds. But if you have the Turbocharger equipped, you remove that spin-up delay and increase the gun's rate of fire to roughly 690 rounds per minute. Now although minuscule, this still equates to an 11-18% to reduction in TTK value, and boosts the overall burst DPS up to 285. And this goes same with the Devotion. The Turbocharger allows the LMG to reach its full RPM rate much faster and increases the rate of fire from stock value of 716 to 774. Which is honestly not that big of an increase when you look at the numbers, but again, because this allows you to get to full auto much faster, you can quickly push out damage on the enemy instead of waiting for the gun to wind up. So for the Devotion, it's not entirely needed as it only is a 7% decrease in the gun's TTK, but it will help to increase the gun's potential when an enemy shows up unexpectedly on you. Given that the Turbocharger hop-up is also a legendary tier item, it will be a rarity to find within the map. Best bet to find it will be within the high tier loot areas of the map or within a care package drop. Now I would stop there with these two guns, but the Havoc is unique in that it can also equip the select fire hop up to this weapon, making it basically into a medium range sniper with a powerful charged shot. Not so powerful though that you would choose it over the longbow or even the triple take for that matter, but it is a nice option for the weapon as it allows you to fight at both long range as well as close up when need be. The damage with the charge shot equates to 54 to the body and 110 to the head. Keep in mind though that the charge shot uses up 4 rounds per shot, so out of a stock mag of 24 rounds you'll have a total of 6 shots available to you. Which is typical of most snipers to have about 5 or 6 rounds in the mag, but there are two somewhat downfalls to this. 
One, it takes half a second to charge the shot, which means you'll need to maintain that bead on the enemy until the shot fires off. And two, in this firing mode, the Havoc fires off at a dismal 55 rounds per minute. Because of all this, it'll take three charged shots to take down a fully armored enemy, which is well over twice as long as it would take with a longbow DMR, which I'll cover later in the video. So with this hop up on the Havoc, you're looking at anywhere from 2.5 to 4.7 seconds to knock a fully armored opponent within the ring. So with all this data in mind, the turbocharger hop up is definitely your better option, but the select fire hop up is a nice option to have if you want some range on the enemy. But again, you will be using up more of that precious energy ammo by using the charge shot, so this is really a preference of choice by you. Next up we have both the Alternator SMG and the RE45 Auto Pistol. Thanks to the new Disruptor Rounds hop up, these two guns have seen a major buff within Season 2. One of them being so substantial that with the hop up, it's now one of the best guns currently within Apex Legends. So with no hop up, the Alternator sits at a decent 15 damage to the body and 22 to the head against normal Legends. But if you find the Disruptor Rounds hop up, which is way easier to find than the Legendary Tier Turbocharger previously discussed, you can dramatically increase the damage output against Shielded Legends. So if you didn't know, the Disruptor Rounds hop up increases damage output against Shielded enemies. So if you break the shield, the damage output will go back to the normal stock value that it was previously. So although the damage output of the Alternator won't change once you break an enemy's shield against Shielded Legends, you'll do a whopping 40% additional damage. Since Body Shield is counted as just additional health within Apex Legends, the Alternator would do 25 damage to the body of any shield no matter the tier level. But since we actually have damage mitigation with the helmets, you'll have a different damage number depending upon what tier level your opponent has equipped. So for the Alternator, against a white helmet you'll do 32 to the head, against a blue it'll do 28, and against either purple or gold tier, the gun will do 26. Thanks to the Disruptor Rounds hop up, this now equates to a 20% reduction in all TTK numbers and an increase to overall DPS of the Alternator by 29%. Needless to say, you'll have no trouble melting down a fully armored opponent and knocking them out of the match within 0.8 to 1.2 seconds. Without the Disruptor Rounds though, it'll take anywhere from 1.1 to 1.5 seconds to take down a maxed out opponent. Regardless though, given that you can pretty much find an alternator anywhere on the map, and the fact that the disruptor hop-up is not difficult to find makes the alternator with disruptor rounds the most sought out weapon within the game currently. Now I should note that TTK is figured differently than the rest of the weapons within the list as there are two separate damage figures on the body and head depending on whether or not an opponent has a shield equipped. So if you don't know the formula, TTK is usually figured as the formula shown on the screen. Time to kill equals 60 divided by the gun's rate of fire, then you multiply that by the amount of health the enemy will have. In this case, we're looking at max armor, so a total of 200 health. And then you divide that total by damage per bullet for the gun we're looking into. But since Disruptor Round's damage per bullet changes depending on when you break the shield of an enemy, this changes the formula a bit since you now have to figure two different health totals. So just so you're aware, the time to kill formula would look like this so that both the shield and regular health blocks are taken into account when evaluating TTK. This is how any gun with disruptor rounds or hammer point rounds hop up is figured within the table you'll see here at the end of the video to equate the true TTK of these weapons against a max armored enemy. Now that you have a better understanding of the figures, let's get into the RE45 auto pistol. With the RE45, it is crucial that you find not only disruptor rounds hop up, but a magazine attachment as well. Reason being is due to the gun's meager damage per bullet and only 15 rounds in the magazine. This gun can simply not take down an opponent with max armor with just its stock magazine. With the stock magazine you'll have to reload or switch weapons in order to get that knock which will add an additional 2 seconds to the time to kill of this pistol. So definitely take that into consideration if you plan on running around the map with this gun. So let's get into the stats. Without the disruptor rounds equipped, you'll be looking at anywhere from 3.1 to 3.5 seconds to take down an enemy. This is of course considering you go through a reload instead of switching to your other weapon. Disruptor rounds will increase the damage output of the RE45 to 16 against a body shield, and depending on the tier helmet, it'll do anywhere from 18 to 22 to the head. Definitely not a substantial increase when comparing it to the alternator, even with the RE45's higher rate of fire. But the Disruptor Rounds will indeed reduce the TTK of this weapon substantially, allowing you to take down an enemy within 0.8 to 2.4 seconds. But again, it comes back to the magazine. Unfortunately, without a magazine equipped, you won't be able to take down a Caustic or Gibraltar with max armor with only 15 rounds. And again, these are things you'll need to take into account when getting into the last rings of the match, as most of the legends you'll be up against will likely have max armor by then. Which is why I figured the TTK of any gun with max health and armor in mind because you should always be looking for the win. 
So now that we've got the disruptor rounds guns out of the way, let's go to the opposite side of the spectrum and get into the hammer point rounds hop up. The disruptor rounds hop up, as stated before, does additional damage to shielded enemies. The hammer point rounds are the exact opposite. This hop up will allow the Mozambique and the P2020 to do additional damage to non shielded enemies. These two guns you should consider as switch off weapons once you've broken the shield of an enemy, as they are practically useless against anyone with shield equipped. So let's first get into the Mozambique. The Mozambique, which can only ever carry 3 shells, normally does 45 to the body and 66 damage to the head. Granted, this is if you hit your target with all 3 markers of its shotgun spread. But because of its low damage and only having 3 shells, it'll take anywhere from 3.7 to 4.2 seconds to take down a maxed out opponent with this gun alone. Which is exactly why it's been considered one of the worst weapons within the game since Season 1, but the hammer point rounds do help in the case of having this gun as a finisher weapon. With the hammer point rounds hop up attached, this pushes its damage output up about 57% to 102 to the body and 153 to the head. Thus, now making the shotgun a one tap on an enemy without a shield, which is why it becomes useful as a switch off weapon with say an alternator with disruptor rounds hop up attached. You can melt an enemy's shield with the alternator and then switch off to the Mohs with a one tap to the body. Alone though, you'll still have to reload this shotgun to get a knock on the body of a maxed armored opponent. But to the head with the hammer point rounds equipped, you can finish an enemy off with 3 shots. Of course, this all takes into account that you will hit all 3 shots with its full spread on a likely moving target at the head. So again, great switch off weapon with the hammer point rounds, but alone, not so good. As we get into the P2020, this has similar difficulties of the RA45 as far as TTK goes. With a meager 13 damage to the body and 19 to the head makes you pray and hope this is not the first weapon you fall upon when dropping within the ring. Even with its quick reload speed of 1.1 seconds, against a fully armored enemy you're still looking at anywhere from 3.1 to 3.5 seconds to take him down. But with the hammer point rounds equipped you'd fall into the same predicament as the RE45. Your TTK value is reduced and can now take down each opponent within 1.1 to 2.6 seconds as damage to non-shielded enemies is increased to a substantial 35 to the body and 51 to the head. Again, the issue lies against fortified enemies such as Caustic and Gibraltar where you'll have to reload for the knock if you don't have a magazine equipped on the gun. Also, keep in mind the majority of enemies out in the ring will have a shield of some kind, so again, you should utilize these hammer point round guns as switch off weapons to quickly take out an enemy whose shield has already been broken. But in most cases, you'll still be better off choosing another higher DPS weapon as you'll be able to better utilize them in more situations than the P2020 and Mozambique with the hammer point rounds equipped. Like the disruptor rounds hop up, the hammer point rounds are quite easy to find across the map as they've been given an epic tier rarity. Now before we get into skull piercer hop up weapons, let's first talk about the non damaging hop up in Apex, the select fire hop up for the prowler burst POW. Now I say non damaging because it doesn't really increase the damage of the prowler. In fact, the select fire hop up will actually reduce the prowler's overall DPS slightly because it's reducing the gun's rate of fire. As a 5 round burst, the gun still has a quick rate of fire of 857 rounds per minute. With the select fire hop up equipped, this will allow you to switch between the 5 round burst fire mode and automatic fire. But as an automatic, this will reduce the weapon's rate of fire down to around 809 rounds per minute. Now although it reduces the rate of fire with this hop up, you can actually increase your accuracy and consistency with the hop up on the prowler. So the select fire hop up attachment really becomes a play on a player's preferences rather than its actual damage output. Between the two, the difference between the TTK values are not substantial either. Without the hop up you're looking at anywhere from 0.8 to 1.2 seconds against a fully armored opponent. But with the hop up equipped you're looking at a slight increase of 0.9 to 1.2 seconds difference. Again, you could actually increase your damage due to the consistency in your accuracy. So again, this hop up is really a preference to the player. Me personally, I would want the hop up just so I can be more accurate and not have to fight the prowler's vertical recoil on its first burst. And last up of all the hop ups, we have the skull piercer rounds that can be attached to either the longbow DMR or the wingman. For both guns, this hop up will be a must have as it'll mean a one shot difference when going for those knockdown headshots. It's important to note that the skull piercer hop up will not increase the body damage for these guns. It only increases the damage to the head, but it's still substantial enough to be on the lookout for. The wingman will normally bust out a damage output of 45 to the body and 90 to the head, which with a stock magazine attached equates to a TTK of 0.8 to 3.5 seconds. Now the reason for the wide TTK range is due to the fact that you can only have 4 rounds in a stock mag for the wingman, which means you'll have to reload to knock a maxed armored enemy with all body shots. 
So like the P2020 and RE45, you're going to want to find a magazine for this pistol in order to better your chances at knocking enemies out of the match. Now since skull piercer rounds only increase the damage of headshots, the TTK value for body shots will stay the same. But with a substantial increase of damage to the head, the skull piercer rounds will increase headshot damage for the wingman from 90 to 126. Which means instead of 3 shots to the head, you'll only need to hit 2 to knock your enemy, and mind you at a faster rate than the longbow. But like all sniper rifles, the longbow is more for ranged combat compared to the wingman which should be utilized more at a medium range. The longbow will normally output a damage per bullet of 55 to the body and 110 to the head. So just like the wingman, it'll be 3 shots to the head to knock a max armored enemy or 4 shots to the body. But with its slow rate of fire, this pushes TTK to anywhere from 1.5 to 2.7 seconds. But again, the longbow is more about range and taking down an enemy's shield at distance. With the skull piercer rounds, you'll increase the power of this DMR from 110 to 146, meaning you'll be able to knock an enemy in 2 shots with max armor. With the Skull Piercer hop up being legendary tier though, it can make it difficult to find within the ring, so definitely work with your team in finding this hop up so you can increase your range damage against your opponents. Alright, so what does this all come down to? Well, for one, any hop ups you see will be a must have for your team, except maybe the hammer point rounds due to the fact that every enemy you see will likely have shields equipped. But in any case, be sure to ping these for your teammates if you spot them, as this will greatly increase your chances for a win within the ring. There is also another hop up I didn't mention within this video which is the precision choke that can be equipped to the triple take or peacekeeper. Because the choke hop up doesn't necessarily increase the damage of the weapons, I left them out of this whole mix in the video. But if you do happen to be running with either of these two weapons, be sure to equip the choke as it will substantially increase accuracy for both of these weapons. So with all the data compiled together, here's all the information you need to know for Season 2 of Apex Legends to help you in your quest of champion within the ring. Again, I've updated the full Excel sheet from the original video, so if you want to view it in all of its entirety, you can check out the link in the description box below. I've also added a timer tab displaying each legend's abilities and healing times within the third tab of the Excel sheet. This will aid in your decision making on whether you should fight or run to heal up, and whether or not you should use your ultimate based on its cooldown time. Just something else to consider while in the game. With that gamers, I am out. Let me know what you thought of this information. Was it useful to you? Did you learn anything new about the hop-ups and how they impact each gun they attach to? Let me know down in the comments below. If there's anything else you'd like me to look into within Apex Legends, let me know down in the comments as well. As you might have guessed, I love testing out new things within video games. If any changes come up within the next season or if any weapons were added into the game, you can be sure I'll cover it on my channel. And as always, if you enjoyed the video and found it helpful, give it a like and tap for a subscribe for more on Apex Legends and other games I cover on the channel. But until next time gamers, this is Sir Mav, signing off.